Hello there, we're up to the 14th in this series of lectures which are based around the curriculum of ETC 1000. Today we're going to think about uh, comparing across groups as we've been doing in, in other uh, videos if you've been watching the series, but in this particular case we're thinking about groups and uh, characteristics of these groups according to the proportions of a uh, particular characteristic. So there's the uh, topic. If you recall, one of the things that we've been emphasizing when you do any kind of data statistic analysis is that uh, you've only ever had a sample and uh, the purpose of making use of the sample is to learn something about some characteristics of the population that you might be interested in. So we're concentrating today particularly in the proportion of a population that has a certain characteristic proportion of people who go to the doctor, etc. But in particular, we want to now think about to subpopulations and whether or not the proportion from this group is different to the proportion from that group. And that, that, sounds, that may sound like a sort of reasonably narrow kind of a question, but if you think about it for a while, you can see where that's got potentially great interest. Is uh, proportions represent you know one of the ways that we capture key characteristics of things that we're interested in, whether it's percentage of people who vote a certain way in an election or percentage of uh, people who uh, choose a particular product over another product, etc. And what we're trying to do is sort of figure out something about the characteristics of people who make those choices. And one kind of way we do that is by looking at subpopulations. So we look at proportion of females who voted a certain way versus proportion of males. And we see, therefore, whether or not the, this particular issue is more, uh, there's, a, there's a difference in views about this issue amongst men and women, or particular products are more marketable to certain uh, subpopulations, age groups, or whatever. So that's why we're interested in this kind of thing. And in order for us to learn something about whether this proportion of the, this part of the population has a different view to this part, uh, we have to take a sample, which includes people from both subpopulations, and compare the sample values and see whether or not they're different. And as we've seen already, just to say they're a bit different is not enough. We need to know whether they're statistically significantly different. And that's where the ideas of hypothesis testing come in. So, for example, here is some data on uh, number of visits to the doctor that people make, and we've got that data. In addition to knowing something about doctors' visits, we've got a lot of information about the characteristics of the people. Um, and we want to know whether there is a difference between men and women in relation to whether they are more likely to visit the doctor. So here we've got the information about doctors' visits. So this is kind of our outcome variable we're interested in. And here we've got the information about whether you're male or female. And our view is that potentially there is a difference between the, 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 proportion, the number of times people go to the doctor or the proportion of times uh, people never go to the doctor. So in particular, this is what we're after here. To some extent, the never going to the doctor issue is more important than you know how many times because uh, one of the concerns that we have on a health side of uh, in sort of healthcare is that if people never come into contact with health professionals, then they may have long-term issues that never get noticed. Whereas there's not as much difference between going to the doctor once and in the last, last few months versus going twice or three times. Uh, but there's a big difference between never going to the doctor and going to the doctor at all. So that's why we're interested in this particular characteristic, doctor's visits or no doctor's visits. Now, the way we do this is a, is a little bit Unusual. What we're going to do is take our information about doctor's visits here and we're going to use it to construct a new variable which has the value zero uh, whenever, um, well here it is here, it equals one if the number of doctor's visits is zero. So anytime you see a doctor's visits equal to zero, this variable is going to be a one. And anytime it's not zero, we'll give it a zero. So then this becomes never visits doctor. A one there, a zero there, then we have a one here. So one means yes and a zero means no. And then a zero for this person, a zero for this person, etc. So we can construct that variable easy enough uh, in Excel. Obviously you wouldn't do it the way I'm doing it here, which is typing in the numbers. You'd come up with a fancy if statement where basically if this cell here is equal to zero, give this value a one. Otherwise, give it a zero. So the if statement would something like Will look something like the following equals if, uh, let's suppose this is column C. So column C2 equals 1, give it the value 0. Sorry, give it the value. If the cell equals 0, give it the value 1. Otherwise, give it the value 0. And then if you drag that formula down, this becomes 
C3, C4, etc., which is all the values in that column. So that's easy enough to do in Excel with the use of an if statement. So we're going to make that our dependent variable. That's our Y variable in a regression. And our X variable in the regression is going to be this one here. And we'll do a regression where this is the dependent variable regressed on the independent variable. And this is the results that we get. And what I'm going to do is just make a, a statement to you about what these numbers in this output mean. And then we're going to do a little bit of the maths to sort of get an, an intuition for why it works out that way. So essentially, here's the output. and in this one piece of output, there are two pieces of information that are quite useful to us. We've included an intercept in this model, um, which means that instead of just getting one row of results, we get two. And these two numbers are very important, these things called the coefficients. The first of these, 0.293, is the proportion of females who never visited the doctor. Um, so 29.3% of females never visited the doctor. And this second number is the difference in proportion of males minus females who never visit the doctor. So just a little bit of quick arithmetic there. 29% of females didn't. Uh, about 40, just about 47% of males never visited the doctor. The difference between that 47% and the 29% is 17.3%. So 29.4% of females had no doctor's visits. 46.8% of males made no doctor's visits. Get that 46.8 by adding those two numbers together. So you have to just take my word for it for the moment that that's what those numbers mean, but that's uh, uh, what we're going to now sort of look into a little bit more detail. So you can see straight away how, how useful that is um, because essentially our, most, our greatest interest here is in is there a difference between men and women? And this number here tells us that in the sample, there's a 17 percentage point difference in the proportion between men and women. And because we've constructed it this way, we could do a test using a p-value or we could do a confidence interval using the rest of the regression output all around this question about whether there is a difference between men and women. So in terms of confidence intervals, we're 95% sure that the difference between men and women in terms of the proportion of times they never go to the doctor is between 12 and 22.8%. There you go, 12%, 22.8% when you round it off. So we're pretty sure it's not zero. We're pretty sure it's very big positive. In other words, men never go to, had no visit, doctor's visits far more often than women. That's, that's what that tells us, somewhere between 12 and 23%. The hypothesis test, this number here, is 2.88 times 10 to the minus 10, which is this thing here. If you've got 10 zeros in there, so thereabouts. Um, so that's a very small p-value, and therefore you would reject the null hypothesis. Remembering what we have learned about p-values, if you're not familiar with p-values, you look at my previous uh, video on that. But p-values are essentially telling us something about how likely it is that a value like this would have occurred by chance. And the answer is extremely unlikely. Um, this is not uh, a, a, a fluke outcome to get a 17% difference in my sample. This is evidence of a clear systematic difference between men and women in terms of how often they go to the doctor, or sorry, whether they go to the doctor at all. So we come to the conclusion very clearly that there is this hypothesis here, which is that there's no difference between men and women, should be rejected. And there's clearly a difference between men and women, and we can even say, based on the sample, that men uh, much more likely to not make doctor's visits at all. Okay, so that's all fine. That's the interpretation. But now I need to perhaps give you a little bit more evidence for why these coefficients tell us this information. I've just sort of told you to, to trust me on that. So to do that, we just need to go back to a little bit of uh, stuff that you might have learned about linear equations in the past. And most people, when they learn linear equations, they, they end up with sort of a formula like something like this, where uh, y equals mx plus c. Uh, so a linear a line through you know, an xy graph essentially is characterized by its intercept down here, uh, which is the value of y when x equals 0. So in this case, you've actually got a negative value for c. And it's slope m. And the slope m tells you what happens to y how much does y increase by if x increases by 1? So this distance here is, is 1. And how much does y go up by when x goes up by 1? And that's what m is. That's the rise and the run is the language that you may have come across before. In 
the models that we build in econometrics, we use this language here. Y is a function of an intercept, so that's like your C, and a slope, it's like your M, and this is an error term, which captures really all the uh, values of Y, all, all the information that's there, all, all of the uh, variation of each Y value from the actual line. So the true data is somewhere on dots, like somewhere like this scattered around the line. Sometimes Y is a bit bigger than the line, sometimes it's a bit less, and the error is that difference. We might think about that a bit more at another time. Okay, so what the model does with these dots being the actual data, what a straight line does with this actual data is essentially puts a line through the middle of that data. It's kind of a generalization of just calculating a mean. If I've got a set of numbers, I just want to calculate the mean. It's kind of like saying, here's the middle of the data. Well, now I've got a two-dimensional set of numbers, and I want quotes the mean of that data. So I can't just have the mean being one value. What the mean is now is a line through that two-dimensional space, which kind of takes me through the middle of the data. And more precisely than just saying the language of middle, we say the language of mean. So that the mean of y is given by this relationship here. So if I knew the in intercept and the slope in this equation, then it would have that relationship there between the mean of y and the mean of x. Now, just go back to the model that we fitted here. Both y and x had a slightly unusual characteristic. Both of them were, only took one of two values, zeros and ones. Here's x, zeros and ones, and here's y, zeros and ones. So the mean of y and the mean of x are, are not kind of like a number, like 50 or 3 or something like that that you might normally expect. So y is 0 or 1, depending on whether you visit the doctor or not. x is 1 for males and 0 for females. So when let's, let's take the case when x equals 0. In that case, the model, if x was 0, this part drops out. So I just get y equals b naught, beta naught plus e, because I'm multiplying this by 0, so it drops out. So when x equals 0, that's the true model. And the expected value of y just equals beta naught, because there is no x in the equation anymore. So beta naught represents the expected value of y when x is 0. What's x equals 0 mean? Well, x equals 0 means you're a female. So beta naught is the value, the mean of y when the person is female, which is exactly what I said over here. Well, not quite exactly what I said. That's the mean of y. But I've said in a couple of, a couple of screens ago that that thing there is the proportion of females with no doctor's visits, not the mean of y. So, so where's the connection there? Well, just remember what y is. Y is uh, 1 if you never visit the doctor and 0 if you did visit the doctor. So you've got a bunch of things like this. Some people get a value 1 because they never visited. Others get a value 0. So suppose I've got just the, I'm just now looking at the females because I've said x equals 0. So suppose this column here represents the first female, the second female, etc. And what have I got? I've got six of them there. Now, if there are a total of six of them, so that's what I'm going to call n, and m of them never visited the doctor, so they're all going to get values of 1, and all the others will get a value of 0. So I'm adding up m ones, in this case there are three of them, and I'm dividing that by the total number of females, which is n, in which case there are six. So in this case, I would get a 3 on 6, wouldn't I, in that simple example up there. In general, though, I get M on N. That is the proportion of females who never visit the doctor. So for this particular type of variable, Y, which only takes one of two values, zeros and ones, when you talk about the expected value of something, of that variable, or the mean of that variable, you're actually computing the proportion of ones that you've got in your sample. In other words, the proportion of people who never visited the doctor. That's what a mean means for a, a column like that. So, beta naught is the mean of y when a person's female. Beta naught is, and the, the mean of y for this zero one type thing is the proportion of females who never visit the doctor. So that's how we get the justification for that particular understanding of the intercept in this regression output here. Now, we do the same kind of thing with the males. When x equals 1, so we had considered first the case equals x equals 0, now let's take the case x equals 1. The model here, here it is, if x equals 1, just becomes y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times 1 plus e. So I just get y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 plus e. 
what's the expected value of y in that case? It's equal to beta naught plus beta one. E we assume to be have a mean of zero. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. Our error term will be assumed to have a mean of zero because all the dots are either above or below the line because this is sort of an average line. So it's going to go through the middle and the errors will average out to zero. So that's why we have this uh, simplification here. So beta naught plus beta one is the mean of y when a person is, fem is male now. So using the same logic as before about what the mean of a column of ones is, sorry, a column of comprising just ones and zeros, then beta naught plus beta one is the proportion of males who never visited the doctor because the mean of a zero one variable is just the proportion in that category. So we've got beta naught, the proportion of females, and we've got beta naught plus beta one, the proportion of males. So what's beta one? It's this one minus this one. So it's equal to the difference between the proportion of males who never visit the doctor and the proportion of females who never visit the doctor. And that's precisely the ter interpretation that we gave when we looked at this output here. That's the difference between men and women. That's the value for the women. If I add those two numbers together, I get the proportion for males, which is beta naught plus beta one. So really that's all we've tried to show here is that in a very simple regression case here, we can look at the differences between these and interpret these coefficients. We can learn whether there's a significant difference between men and women in terms of this characteristic. But what we've tried to do is provide some justification for why these numbers have that interpretation. I hope that makes sense and uh, just uh, hope you can see the possibilities for how you can tease out differences between different subpopulations using this kind of analysis. Thanks. We shall uh, take you back to here and leave you be for now. Thank you very much. Bye.